Okay, okay. thanks. Thank um, so this uh, last session is about uh, integrating uh, power via media dependent interface and power over data line to the kernel. Uh, at the point of creating the slides, it was not mainline and uh, it was around seven uh, as preparation for mainlining. There was long discussion and a lot of different changes. Uh, if you want to get a bit more information, uh, then probably it will be a good idea to follow this link or to maybe, to, if you trust me, you can scan this QR code. Um, so maybe till the end of the station, you'll have some extra questions. Um, should I keep it? Or you already scanned? Uh, my, my, the, the comment is, uh, Maciej has already re reviewed your patch. His phone has already exploded. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they need to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, for now, uh, all of the patches are already mainline, and uh, in the net next uh, uh, branch, kernel branch, so it is already final discussion. And here I will show you what is all about and how is it more or less uh, precisely working. Um, first point uh, of uh, all this power delivery thing and. Uh, implementation. It, it was a uh, very old part of Dusty IEEE specification. Uh, all of you probably know this as a power over Ethernet. And it's all about to delivering uh, power over twisted pair, precisely over two twisted pairs. Uh, it, was, uh, it was introduced or it was added to final specification in 2003 as Amendment 802.3RF, and it was extended to deliver even more power with Amendment 80 at 2009. As you can see in this picture, we have two sides. One is PSA, is a power source equipment. Other, another is a power powered device. Um, with more time, uh, we had even more devices which consumed more power. So this specification was extended even more with four, uh, with, uh, by using all four twisted pairs. Um, and finally, we got Ethernet to some industrial and automotive things and we needed to reduce amount of cables. So we have a specification for only one twisted pair. If you see the main difference between uh, these two variants is that each twisted pair uh, for power over Ethernet is delivering uh, one direction of power. So one twisted pair is plus, another is minus. For power over data line, we have only one twisted pair. So within this twisted pair, we have plus and minus. This introduced a bit more challenges. So we needed to have some extra hardware for this case to be able to filter, uh, to split uh, the power and uh, data stream on um, pair basis. Uh, so this specification uh, has uh, a lot of more interesting things like um, device detection, which is currently not implemented in this patch set. Um, the detection happens uh, as, uh, as soon as the uh, device is connected, then with constant current supply, we will have some kind of voltage drop on the port. So. We will need to measure this, and this can be implemented in different ways. Uh, some, uh, we have sometimes uh, chips which implement all kinds of power, uh, power supply uh, for Ethernet, or sometimes they have even 
solutions based without chips like uh, SOC is monitoring uh, voltage drop with some ADC and uh, as long as uh, voltage drop is within specified uh, window then everything fine the PD is detected if uh, it is outside of specification for example it's too low then in this case we have a short detected or something like this it will be handled separately um, the other part of specification uh, defines uh, optional classification functionality and uh, in this point uh, this variants power over ethernet and power over detailed data line have uh, some more differences. For example, power over data line is using SCCP single, uh, it is kind of uh, one wire communication uh, as uh, opposite to power over Ethernet, which is using more analog way by uh, monitoring uh, current uh, on this port. So as soon as current goes outside of, uh, it, we should, there, there is a bit uh, more complex way, but uh, the simple explanation is that if the current is reaching uh, some specific level, it will be mapped to a specified class of this level. So typical power over Ethernet device uh, will have, uh, some resistor which is matched to actual class uh, of this device there is no no way to have some kind of uh, digital configuration for for this kind of things um, a typical challenge of uh, mainlining things to the kernel is to name things especially if they was not pre-mainlined before and uh, at this point, uh, at the beginning, it was an easy decision, just name it power over Ethernet. But uh, I failed immediately after starting to read more about this inside of IEEE specification. Uh, the first point was there is no power over in Ethernet inside of this specification. It is called power via media dependent interface or PVMDI. Um, the second problem was that uh, actually I needed for this point of time power over data line and it was not compatible with PVMDI as well. Uh, so I was seeking for other ways to name it. Um, using amendment names was not real option as well. Usually, uh, we use these names like a standard, but actually it is more comparable, at least for my understanding, it is more comparable. Like we have a hash ID of some Git commit inside of the kernel, but at the end we drop all Git history and have kernel snapshot. So if I will refer to this kernel snapshot without having, I mean, if I will refer to uh, this hash ID without having git history, it will be pretty useless. And this was a kind of challenge for many uh, open source developers without having full access uh, to IEEE library, because usually it is not possible to get uh, free uh, access to all of these amendments, but it's still possible to get free or at least cheaper access to one of specification snapshots. Like uh, currently there was a IEEE access program. Uh, so you can get for free without paying for this uh, IEEE 802.3 for 2018 variant of specification and you can compare the specification with current page sets. So it will mostly match without any problem. 
so at the last, uh, as last point, I uh, decided to find common names used in both parts of specification. There was just PSA and PD. All of these are matching to both of them. Uh, in case of power over Ethernet and power over data line, we use always same terms like uh, power source equipment and powered device. Uh, and if you are referring to some uh, cheap data sheets, you'll have you'll find these names as well. So this is probably the common thing which can be found in every part of specification. Uh, so at the end, the mainline version called PSAPD. The same challenge was about UAP. Um, even if, uh, to, first of all, we, we have uh, both of this part specification are separate inside of IEEE specification. So we have PSE for power over Ethernet or power via media independent media dependent interface, and we have PODL PSE for actually power over data line. Uh, so I kept this difference inside of uh, for you API as well. So if you'll see my patches, um, you'll see that you uh, API is currently implementing only these three calls. Uh, as, uh, at the beginning, you see the line which is taken from IEEE specification and the mapping to actual kernel UAPI. I try to keep it as close as possible uh, by <laughs> trying to not to explode uh, line names uh, too much. Uh, so potentially you'll be able to find uh, the roots of specification uh, by following uh, all of these UIPs. Uh, for initial kernel implementation, I tried to keep it uh, as small and as simple as possible, not to implementing everything. Uh, first of all, because uh, to for UIP, uh, it is easy to make it useless and we still should keep it if it's not correct or not useless, or at least to, to try to keep it, not, not breaking it. And uh, so for now, only this uh, call, three calls was implemented and uh, only PODL variant of this. Um, this framework allows you to have multiple PSA controllers uh, for each device, for example, it is probably a typical use case for many switches with power over Ethernet support. And each PSA controller may have multiple cells which are connected to actual network ports. And this way is preserved uh, so you can reflect all of this configuration with device tree and access uh, at least port specific configurations and status over uh, by using ETH tools. For example, uh, these patches, uh, the ETH, patch, ETH tool patches are currently not mainline. I wanted to wait until uh, kernel version is settled down. So with patched version of ETH tool, you'll be able to this following configuration. At the first line, I'm listing all interfaces available on my device. In this case, uh, there's T1 L1 inter interface. And as you can see, it is in administrated state down. It is not enabled as a link. At the same time, you can access over ETH tools uh, and show uh, actual state of PSA support on this board. If there is no PSA support or no PSA uh, devices attached, you'll just get no, no devices uh, uh, supported. And in this case, there is attached device. So you can see admi admin state of uh, uh, power delivering and uh, actual 
power detection sta status. All, all of these names are take uh, from IEEE specification, so you will be able to get even more information about this by comparing with specification. If you want to configure uh, power delivery on one of interfaces, so you need to set PSA interface name, and uh, I tried to keep uh, PODL and POE separately, so you have PODL specific name like PODL PSA admin control enabled, I don't know if it's uh, end version or maybe uh, someone will provide uh, some better solution. So at the end, uh, uh, power will be enabled. And for this simple specific, uh, simple implementation, which I was used, so there will no other magic happens. So it will just start delivering power and it will be reflected uh, as, as you can see on um, this page. I compared, uh, I tried to compare this with uh, some uh, state of the art switches which are implementing power over Ethernet. And uh, one of uh, my candidates was uh, Cisco. Uh, all of these names you can find there as well. So it is uh, all of implementation, or most of implementation seems to refer IEEE specifications. So it can the knowledge which is uh, gathered for some of devices will be reusable for this implementation as well. Uh, but there is still a lot of work to do. For example, uh, classification support will be need needed for PSA side of implementation. Uh, in some cases, for example, for portal or for data line, there is at least at current point, there are no controllers supporting portal. So in many cases, we need to create own uh, combination of different paths to provide the support. So for example, uh, this ACCP protocol will be probably implemented by software like bit banking or somehow or something like this. Uh, other challenge which will come is uh, how ACCP will collide with auto negotiation or with fast link pulses on the Ethernet cable because all of them are just pulses and we'll need to harm, somehow uh, do proper, proper sequencing of ACCP and then allowing auto negotiation or something like this. Uh, we'll think about this as soon as we have some device to where we can test actual implementation and we'll have all of these challenges. Um, for a typical switch, there's a probably some more challenges like a switch, uh, a complete device will probably have not enough power budget uh, for all power ports. So we will not be able to deliver maximum power on every port at the same time. In this case, we'll need to have some kind of uh, prioritization and policy configurations. So we will be able to set something like, okay, the port number three, which has some critical device attached to this, should get uh, all power which is needed and probably disable power on some less critical device. I currently don't know how this will look like at the end, but it seems to be asked future by many uh, vendors. So as soon as we have uh, some something to work with it, then this part will be researched as well. Um, I tried to reuse uh, as much as possible of existing frameworks. So even for this implementation, I am using regulator framework as powering as power delivery, but uh, probably we'll need even more like power delivery frameworks. So we are able to get complete chain of power delivery inside of each device and be able to get uh proper information 
and proper capabilities. For example, um, maximal power budget depends in many cases on actual power supply, which is connected to the switch or to our PSA device. And in some cases, especially in portal use case, we may face some situations where uh, some different power supply is attached as it was actually designed, for example, with less, uh, uh, less current. And in this case, we will need some to give some freedom to administrator to specify what is actually attached to uh, base A. For example, we'll be able to let the system automatically reduce maximal power, uh, maximal available power. On the powered device side, we can do some extra smart things as well. So we can do, uh, we can at least read uh, classif uh, result results at, of classification because not always we can do, we can get what we want. And sometimes uh, if we get less, uh, power device controller is able to report us uh, what, uh, what class we, we was actually getting, what real class. And uh, from this information, we can do just uh, troubleshooting or do even some more things like uh, tell the system how much power budget have, uh, do we have. And in some cases, for example, let's take a surveillance camera with a motor. Uh, if we have a power budget enough for CPU, but not, 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 not enough budget for the motor, uh, we will be able to notify the system about current limitations so that administrator will be able to investigate what is, go what is going wrong. So we'll be able to communicate with the system and see and do some extra debugging. So this is done for now. <laughs> if you have questions or more information, then please give me it. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Alexej. Oh, I see those claps going on in the background. I haven't seen them till now. Uh, any questions from the audience? Yeah. The man with the exploded phone. By the way, while the camera is being handed out, uh, looks like, are there devices in the marketplace right now that already support this instead of PoE? And yeah, the switches. The switches are already out there? With PoE? No, no. So this, this is this with new... With the support yeah. for software. Uh, okay. With Podl? Yes, there are devices with Podl support. And uh, currently, I have on my table uh, one of the devices which will be on the market someday. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't help me, right? I can't get the switch that's on your You table. can't test it on your <laughs> bench. <laughs> no, we don't have wire to his house. <laughs> yeah, the, that's one of the challenges that I wanted to ask about long wires and uh, because then auto negotiation may fail and we need some interface to force, for example, a certain class that may be a good addition to this interface. Because when you run long runs of cables, then the auto negotiation may fail because of the cable uh, resistance that that messes up the auto negotiation uh, and also is this is this uh, ap new api cover also the legacy poe that went 24 volts one or or not really it's, it's only targeted towards the newer 4856 volts uh, i have got just only currently only the last part of the question about legacy uh, currently mm. not but we have a discussion with one of our potential customers uh, to implement PoE support. So I will address some of this topic, I hope, in next months.
Okay, yeah, uh, because it will just need another argument like the max voltage or max standard or something like that, right? Yes, exactly. Those. Yeah, and um, the, the first part was about long runs of cables that messes up the auto negotiation, which requires some interface to force the PoE port to either be enabled or disabled as well, not only just on off with auto negotiation. So yeah. And uh, yes, I agree, this will be needed uh, as well. Um, but as you can see uh, in this patch set, uh, PoE is currently not implemented. It is mm -hmm. implementing only PODL. Um, mm -hmm. But as I said, uh, hopefully in next month, uh, I'll get my hands on it and uh, PoE will be implemented at least partially. OK, that's all, thanks. Yeah. A uh, very interesting uh, talk, uh, first thing. And I have two two questions. Just put it closer, probably. <laughs> okay. And I have two questions. Uh, the first one: uh, Is it possible to detect the typo uh, if we are powering the the car by the M, uh, MDI or the data lane? Or how can be detected? Uh, can you please? Uh, no, I didn't understand you. Please. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I would like you. You have so uh, sorry. I'm going to try to explain you in a better way. Uh, you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, you saw with the command ATH tool that it's possible to, in some way, check the status of, of the powering. Uh, is it, uh, does it need something extra, some configuration to check which is the mode that we are using? Uh, currently, this is... Yes, I mean, for example, you are showing that uh, PODL is disabled, OK? Yep. Mm -hmm. And... But perhaps we have power the car with PO MDI. Is it possible to detect in an, in any automatic way the the type of? Oh, okay, I understand you. Um, currently, no. <laughs> you will get uh, currently um, if you use, for example, show PSA, it will provide you information about existed existing. Uh, PSA variant. Uh, so it'll show you um, supported uh, fields, but it will not provide you actual type as extra field, which is probably a good future to to have. Uh, as soon as we'll work on POE variant of this, then we'll probably need to introduce this um, because We'll need some help to actual user space tools to understand what is what is actually supported or why, what not. Um, currently, I don't have a final idea how this should be implemented in user space. Maybe user space should be abstracting all of this. I don't know if you have some ideas. <laughs> uh, but uh, first idea was to use direct mapping without any uh smart extras and uh, with assumption okay user will be able to uh get needed information for example if we yeah, use show psa uh command and it is showing portal psa admin state uh it means for me okay i'll need to use portal psa admin control command to enable or disable it to change it um right right now i see it is problematic uh, but uh, well we need some ideas <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's difficult I, I think okay and the second question it's curiosity uh, is it necessary to use another or, or beta category for the cables um, excuse me okay i'm going to repeat 
is it necessary to use a different or specific uh, category for the Ethernet cables to use the new power on Ethernet, let's say? Um, I didn't test this with power over Ethernet, but for power over data line, uh, yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean about data line. Yeah. For power over data line, you'll need to... Yes, the, the question is if you need a specific or beta category for the data line. Oh, um, I have, haven't seen any uh, categorized uh, uh, T1 uh, cables. I mean, uh, they all kind of uh, single twisted pair without any categories <laughs> for now, okay. what I see, have seen. And Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Anybody else? Nothing on the bridge. In that case, thank you, Alexej. Uh, this sounds actually quite interesting, and I think BOE is. It's it's high time that we uh, use all those cables we are lying that are lying all over the place and do power with it as well. So thank you. I, I, um, <laughs> Uh, Jamal, the next guy. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do that.